Hey, how's it going? This is Brandon Kish, and this is a tutorial on the built-in uh, debugger for the MP Lab. What is a debugger, and why are we going to use it? Well, basically, a debugger allows us to modify our code and see exactly what our code is doing, so that when we send it to the PIC, we can ensure that it's doing what we want it to do. It also helps us fix errors that might be in our program. When you send the program to your PIC and it's not doing exactly what you expect it to do, it might be a good idea to use the debugger to check out to see if, uh, if your code might not be wrong. Okay, so I have here, I have some code that I'm going to be working with. And uh, to start the debugger, we go up here to debugger, and we go to select tool, and we want to select MP Lab Sim. And you're going to get a message, especially if you have your PIC Kit 2 enabled. It's going to say, would you like to switch to the debugger because it can't have the PIC Kit 2 at the same time. You just say OK. In fact, I usually select do not show this warning again. OK, so now we're in debugging mode. And you can tell because you see a little bar here with some commands on it. And if you go to your debugger, debugger menu, you'll also see some more commands on your menu. This is a clear indication that you're in debugging mode. And I just wanted to go over these buttons real quick. Uh, run will basically go through and run the command line by line. Halt will do just what it sounds like. It'll pause the program wherever it's reading the code. And animate will also run the code, but the difference between animate and run is animate will show you a little green arrow. I'm going to go ahead and click on this. As you can see, you see a little green arrow that shows you what line of code it's executing. The, uh, these three buttons here we're mainly not going to be using for this tutorial. This reset button here does exactly what it says. What it does is it resets the debugger. So it'll start from the beginning of your code and work its way down again. And this button here deals with breakpoints. Although usually I don't use this button to insert breakpoints, but I will show you how to put breakpoints into the code. Basically what a breakpoint does is it's like a pause command. It tells the debugger when it gets to a certain point into your code to stop at that point. So what's the purpose of a breakpoint? Well, if you want to pause at a certain point in your code and give yourself some time to check out some variables or maybe see what pins are on and off, that's the command to do it, to be able to look at a specific location in your code and see how everything's reacting. And we'll get into a demonstration of that later. One other important feature for the debugger that I'd like to show you is the ability to increase or decrease the speed of the debugger. So we're going to go ahead and click animate and you're going to see the debugger is going to start going through the code line by line there. And we're going to go to our debugger and settings and as you watch you can see how fast the code is going. Okay, Let me remove these breakpoints, disable all breakpoints and let's continue on. If we go to animation real time updates and we increase this amount you can see that the green arrow starts really flying through the code. But if we start bringing it over here, and we can actually slow down the code a lot. And what this allows us to do is we can pay more attention to the different variables and how they're being affected by the code itself. Or you might want to just kind of skim through it and just kind of see how it's going, um, how it's doing as it goes. Okay, so let me give you an example of a breakpoint. Uh, one quick easy way to insert a breakpoint into your code is to just double click on the line of code and you can see a little B there that circle that represents that there's a breakpoint on that line of code. If you double click it again it will remove that breakpoint. We're going to go ahead and enable our breakpoints. And what this is going to do, I've already set up breakpoints into my code. As we run the program, if we go to animate, when it gets to one of these breakpoints, see the arrows over the B, it's going to pause at this point. And this will eventually allow us to view variables and see the status of different pins and things that we might not have saw if it kept continuing the process. So that's really the few features that I wanted to show you to actually getting the debugger up and running. First one was going to settings, animation, real-time updates, 
being able to adjust the speed of it. The second thing was the toolbar. You got your run, which if we click this, it'll actually run the command, run the program without showing you an arrow, and it'll run it extremely fast. And you can see here I have run pressed. It's not actually showing the arrow. Um, if you look, it'll, it's actually running the code as if it were in the PIC. That's not doing it very slow. Um, this is useful if you want to see sort of real time what's going to happen with your code. We have our pause command, our halt, and then our animate, which gives us the arrow. And obviously, I got my program running really fast right now. We have our reset and we know how to enter breaks or remove them. And that concludes this tutorial for the first part of the debugging tutorial.